1995, director Tony Scott teamed up with Denzel Washington for the movie Crimson Tide. This summer, they are back with another film called Man on Fire. It tells the story of a former U.S. soldier hired as a bodyguard for a wealthy family in Mexico City. Joining me now is the film's director, Tony Scott, and Denzel Washington. I am pleased to have them here at this table. Denzel, uh, back from a number of times he's been here before. Tony, it's good to see you. Great to have you here. Uh, tell me about this movie. First of all, 8, 1980? Uh-huh. Milshan calls you up and says, I got a movie and we got to make it, and, or what? Um, I started working on this on the Mountain Fire in 1980, yeah. and uh, and then I just completed a film called The Hunger, and people weren't too sure that I could handle this uh, handle this one. So um, so you went out and did Top Gun. So I did Top Gun. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, and then Arnold called me up like two years ago and said he's just he's channel surfing at 3am and said I saw the the old one about doing a new one. Said, this was with with Glenn Scott Glenn and others. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, and so. I said yes because it's something that's always stayed with me. What stayed with you? It stayed with me because it, it's such a, for me, it was such a huge emotional roller coaster and, and it touched so many human emotions in terms of love, fear, danger, violence. Um, and it's very rare that you get one product or one script that has all this stuff in yeah. this, this, this one particular thing. It's and also about kidnapping, which is a yeah. sort of fact of life in the world today. Uh -huh. And kidnapping in the 1980s, the kidnap capital was Italy. Yeah. And, right. um, Aldo Moro and all of them, politicians yes. and the like. Yeah. And, uh, and then, but today it's Latin Mexico. America. In Latin America. Well, it's Latin America, so I did my homework on Latin America. You say that Mexico is, in fact, a central character in this movie. Yes. Because it's a place where kidnappings take place, or because of what? No, I played it like a, as I say, central, a third character in the piece because it's such a powerful, it's such a beautiful city. It's the center of the city of the 16th century. Then you come out the barriers, which are timeless. You could, you could be in Morocco. Um, and uh, it's sexual, it's dark, it's dangerous, it's violent, it's beautiful. And it, it just felt like a, a good color to balance with everything else or a good background for this movie. You'd the read story. the novel before, or seen the movie, the I early read the movie. The novel, hadn't seen the movies. Yeah. Well, did, so did you like it? Did, was it appealing to you? Do you think anything think other I, than just just one more good read? I read the script, and it, I knew that Tony was involved, and Tony and I had done Crimson Tide together, and it was a good experience and, and a successful film. So it made sense. I, I think I read the book. I may have read the book after I. The, Join the squad. I don't even remember. Somewhere in there, I, I picked up the book. Yeah. No, it must have been early on. Yeah. It was early. You reread it. I reread. Re yeah, I reread <laughs> re it. And you kept coming with pages from the book. So that's right. It's I a kept great line here. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That book, I got the book all marked up. That's now right. you begin casting with him, don't you? Uh -huh. Now you, you get Denzel. Now we're yes. second. Dakota Fanning. Was Dakota, well, <laughs> is that right? Well, no. You know, tell him who, Wait, you tell him who Dakota Fanning is because she steals this movie. She steals. Everybody it. agrees yeah. with that. Yeah, she steals it. I mean, the great Denzel. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, the she, great Academy she, Award winner says, Dakota, steal the movie. She, she stole I Am Sam from what yeah, I Yeah, she, she, she did. She's Absolutely. just brilliant. She's a brilliant young actress and, and, and a young woman. And she just has this soul. She, you know, it's cliche to say an old soul, but she really does. I, I, I was saying earlier that I've done two films, both with Tony, interesting. I've done two films where I found myself watching the other actor. And one was with Gene Hackman. And, and, in Crimson Tide, and, and this film, I'm just sitting there, not even in character. I'm like, who's who, who is she? <laughs> let me see your and, and, let me see your birth certificate. And how did you get this good? How did you get so this young. good? So young, it's amazing. This this is two movies. The first movie is is a man what trying to find his soul or mm -hmm. what? That was a love story. Yeah, and 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 a man in search for his soul. He's you know what. Uh, the Bible over here and, and the, the, yeah. the whiskey over there and, and uh, she's like a, an angel that comes into his life and, and turns does, him around. Does what for him? I think she gives him hope. She definitely helps him to smile and, and, uh, and, and to, to believe that there's a reason to live. You know, he talks about not being able to, to be near people too much or to talk to people. He's, he's got all kinds of demons that we never find out about specifically. but. But she breaks through all of that, and she cracks that 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 shell, and and then she's snatched from him. Mm -hmm. Nine. How much of this was improvised? I'd say three quarters. Three quarters of that. Three quarters of that scene began yeah, in the script. script. Off script. Mm -hmm. Once so, he said you're smiling, that was, that was all improvised. Yeah. And everything yeah, that's else good. Well, she she's good, and you know well, it's like tennis. You, you hit the yeah. ball over the net, you'll hit it back. Right. With top spin. <laughs> 
That's it, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. and he said at the end when we did that, they could take that's one take. You all take one take. So I always use so two, you, you I used two you cameras. Two cap, so you didn't do another take. You had it. You I, well, didn't need to no, do I did. It. I think we did four takes and went insecure <laughs> and paranoid. You, you know, didn't but, know how good it was right then. <laughs> no, I did. did I, knew, I knew it was good. But did then you I, use the first take or did they get better and better? Uh, this was I think it was take two. But I always used two cameras, like this dueling camera. So I was shooting Denzel same time as I was shooting her, mm -hmm. and that's what when people always go. It's ridiculous shooting two cameras or four cameras, but. Um, we were talking about it earlier, just saying that it enables you when you're doing a movie, which is about emotion, to capitalize not having an actor to repeat the same, say, I've got the wide shot, I've got to come in for close-up coverage. If you're trying to get spontaneity mm -hmm. from um, improvised performances, it's really hard to capture a second time around. I heard you ask him as we were looking at the trailer. You said to him, how did you do that? Is that because you are now beginning to think about more and more about directing and thinking? I know you've directed because mm -hmm. you were here talking mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. in a memorable show we did. But you look now more acutely. Yeah, I, I have. I, I I understand the process now. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be you shoot a movie, see you later. I'll, I'll see you when we loop and see you at the premiere. Uh, once you make a film, you you you've gone through the whole process of, of development of the script, of the performances, of the you know production, of uh, pre-production, of post-production. So I know, in in theory, what's supposed to happen. You know, I, at least I know what I wasn't able to accomplish, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You getting ready to direct again? Yes. You and, know what? Uh, next year. You well, I'm developing the material now and, and uh, be ready for next year. Are you going to act in it or just direct? I hope not. It's harder to I don't, act I'm in just it. not interested in it. It's, it's, I don't want to do that. Are you losing interest in acting or just in terms of I have what you want to do in your in life direct. now? I like directing a lot. Why? Because I like it. You, it just appeals to your... Yeah, I, well, you know, you know, in the fifth grade, I took an art appreciation class. And I studied everybody from Rembrandt to Modigliani to whoever. And, I, and, and a lot of it stuck with me. And I've always been interested in art and painting. And I've, I, I've never... I, I thought acting was the canvas. I found that it wasn't. It's some of the paint. It ain't even all the colors. It's definitely not the brush. It's the brush, too. But it's still not the paint, too. Yeah. And, and I like, as, as Tony is, a, is, a, is an artist, he's a painter, you know, and a cinem cinematic and, and, mm. and, 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 and paint. And I, I just like the, that I just have progressed over the years to the point now where I have some ideas and yeah. I just want to express myself. You know Eastwood well? No, I don't know him well, but, but I sure look at what he's done. And, and even from a practical standpoint, business standpoint, if you will, I like what's happening. I'm looking at him. I'm going, yeah. you know, hey, when I get there, yeah. he's, he has another career. Yeah. You I know? mean, he just made as good a movie as he's ever made at 70 at something. Se exactly. Yeah. So you, you know? get to stretch it out a little more. <laughs> when you worked with guys in the last four or five movies, Hackman, Washington, Pitt, Redford, and I'm missing some, mm -hmm. people of that caliber, superstars, how do you handle them? Any difference? Do you look at each one and say, I gotta figure out? Yes, I sit down, I spend time with them, make sure. And I will, you know, normally, normally you've got to, before you sit down, you've got to have a deal on the table. Yeah, somehow I always managed to finagle my way around would, would, that. Would you like me to leave the room now for a second? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, and I, so I we can tell you the truth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, and I always believe. Sorry, I won't be working with you again. <laughs> no, no. I always believe the strength in my casting yeah. is that I try and cast who the guys are really at home with the feet up in front of the TV. And so I always, I always look to find whether it's Denzel in this or Gene Hackman as a submarine commander. I felt that Gene was the character, and so I always try and <coughs> channel my characters in the script back to who I believe the real guy is. So whether it's Robert Redford in, in yeah, Spy Game, uh, yeah, um, or Brad, I always try and find, I always want them to be, I always try and cast it to who I believe they really are at home. And you I, really yeah. cast them the way they really are at home. So, that is my, yeah. So Denzel that we see in this movie, there's something connected I'm a, to yeah. Denzel at home. Well, the connection with Denzel, to this movie as I watched him on Crimson Tide talk about his kids. I never I never got to meet his kids then. But there's just little moments I remember standing on this <laughs> standing on this gimbal. On the gimbal. On the gimbal. And Denzel summary. was talking about his talking about his, his son who's just started playing football and I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I just saw, I saw a connection then in terms of family connection. And um, and uh, so I don't know you see and it was funny because my casting session for Denzel was 
we met in a doctor's surgery by, we hadn't seen each other since Crimson Tide, and he and I were in Dr. Mao's waiting for acupuncture in our broken knees, and, uh, and we just sat and talked, and I was then in the process of, of uh, prepping Man on Fire, and it's just that conversation with him. And you had not chosen actor. Uh, I'd seen Dakota Fanning um, like a week or so before, and, and I am Sam. <laughs> and uh, I'm sitting with Denzel. I didn't tell him what we're, we're no, this he didn't tell me at all. And he was about to work it. I'm auditioning. <laughs> and I didn't even know it. He's exactly. And you were having to put needles in your knee. <laughs> yeah, I got the pins to get out of my head. And I'm auditioning. And so that's and so I got a free audition in a way. But you know, we talked about the movie. I just talked about family and talked about mm -hmm. our lives. And, and so you are auditioning at that time. And so and as soon as I walked out of there, I said, "This is the, <laughs> this is the guy for this." And I, and you know, everybody says to you, "Why do you cast this person? Why do you cast that, cast that person?" And there's one thing I was trying to cast who I believe the people really are. Yeah. And secondly, it's a gut response. It's like painting. That's my background. And the, and the true response comes from here in the end. And the balance of Dakota and Denzel was such a brilliant love story. That's such an odd balance, but a great balance. And, um, and that's, that's where I do it. Now, what's interesting here, here's a guy who is known uh, as he makes action movies. That's what he's best known for, correct? That's Fair what enough. he's best yeah. known best for. Best known for. Mm -hmm. He's a painter, mm -hmm. a sensitive soul here. I mean, there's a kind of... The, the other thing, going back to an earlier question, what attracted me to this is is the the painter, the artist that I saw, because I saw I, I saw a oh shoot I can't think of the name of it the hunger yeah. I saw the hunger, and I really liked that movie. I just remember the the curtains flopping and yeah. the style and the birds and and, and David Bowie and and all Catherine that. Deneuve. In the nerve yeah, and, and the two ladies and yeah. Susan Sarandon. Right. So I remember the movie. I never put two and two together. I, I never realized the same guy who did the, the Hunger did Top Gun and, and all these other films. So when he told me the story about the Hunger and, and wanting to do uh, Man on Fire next and the whole 20 year process it took to get to that, I, 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 aside from Top Gun and the other films, uh, you know, just from my experience on Crimson Tide was enough for me. But it also, because of the Hunger, I saw another side and a sensitivity and an artistry that uh, but, but me. you so you know this thing is here, this relationship to family. Uh -huh. It causes you to say he's the guy for the movie. Uh -huh. But well, then I had to change a little so bit. So it's your job I, over now that no, you're casting. No, no, that no, that I had to I had to change a little bit. You know, keeping Denzel in mind, I had to readjust the character in my mind, and then sit with Brian Helgeland. And Brian was a huge. He's the writer. Of course, Brian he also a, wrote Mystic River and yes, other things. And Brian's a huge fan of Denzel's, and so he did adjustments. You know, to so to he that made the script thinking of Denzel, and that Correct. made it a little bit of a different script. Yes. Yeah. Having nothing to do with race, just to do no. with the nature of the person. Exactly. Here is where we go into the second part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now talking about revenge and vengeance, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which was Creasy seeks revenge on a corrupt police officer who profited from the kidnapping of the little girl, Peta. This was the process of interrogation. Interrogation to get to the next guy, to work his way through the food chain. So what he did, he went to the first guy who was all over the first kidnapping, mm -hmm. was the guy in the car, yeah. and he gets the information through interrogation, you know, right. to the next guy, to the next guy, to this guy. So this I is like a, how you pointed at fingers. <laughs> pointed at fingers on the first guy, yeah. And um, so whatever it took to actually get the information to work through the food chain, he, he did it. And this is what, the, the, there was a real guy called John Creasy back right. in Italy in the 70s. Right. Right. He was right. a real character. Right. And then it was much simpler because we knew that he just wanted to get any of the guys who were responsible for the death of this child in, back in Italy. And, um, and he, we knew in the, in, and in the end he was going to get to the Godfather, but they got to him before he got the Godfather. And Mexico is different because there are, the groups are divided up, the, the kidnapped groups are divided up into cells. They're very organized. So, like terrorists. They're like terrorists, like terrorist cells. So there's the bosses, and they have cell phones. These and the guys, and they call the guys. They call the guardians. They call the, the guys that actually do the kidnapping. Um, but the, they, those guys have no main means of communicating to the bosses. So it's a very mm. tough piece of inve investigation that he has to do in order to find the bad guy. And the bad guy was role modeled through my research on a real kidnapper. Who? Aris Mendes, who's the biggest kidnapper in the history of Latin America, I think. Do you like preparing for a movie as much as making the movie? Uh, I like all parts of the process. There's nothing more frightening than actually making a movie, and there's nothing more satisfying. The days you're on the set. When you, when it go, like the, the improvisation between the Dakota and Denzel. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, do you, what do you like best about this whole process? What is it that, that you live for more than anything else? I like the, I like the research and the preparation, you know? And, and, and 
and finding that character and and you don't always find it especially not in the first few days necessarily you're still working it out but uh it's an interesting journey and to and to 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 be able to visit visit these different worlds to suddenly you know some of the experts that you, that you, that you found that I worked with and you know tapping their brain and I mean days like there was a, a woman who, who whose daughter had been kidnapped and she came in and talked to us and and she told the story with her daughter there of how they had cut her ears mm -hmm. off and and she was talking about it and just I mean these real stories and real people and real obviously real emotions and it's it's an it's a unique uh, uh, profession to be. You and then suddenly the we're going into places where you would never go as a tourist you know you, you see Mexico City like you'd never see it like no one else would see it uh, only in the film business can you or journalism or, or journalism right. yeah any right. and, and, and basically see, I'm an investigative reporter that's a, the great thing about journalism yeah. you can I'm, go anywhere and see things through an eye and through a vision and through a prism right. and through access yeah. that you don't I'm an get investigative otherwise. Uh, 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 not reporter, but uh, I, you know, what's the word? I, I, I perform. I'm an, I'm, I'm an investigative interpreter. Yeah. I investigate. Oh, oh, yeah, and then I interpret. Yeah. So, yeah. what was the peg for this guy? A very simple thing, really. It's a few things, but one was that the more pressure he's under, in my mind, the, the, it's, a, it's like it's like his heart rate goes down. Yeah. His heart rate goes down. Now let me tell you something about you, which he said. I don't know if you ever heard him say this. He said that most actors, when they get ready to perform, you can feel the adrenaline, you can feel the heartbeat getting fast, you can feel it. With you, it is exactly the opposite. It's almost like the closer they get to action and saying action, if that's what you do, you feel that it's cooler. He's cooling down, don't you? Didn't you say that? I do. I did. That's on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. The, the inside's different. Do you think he's right about <laughs> there, this? There are a lot of, uh, 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 the number 40 is real important in the Bible, you know. The mm -hmm. flood was 40 days and Jesus mm -hmm. prayed and did something for 40 days. 40 comes up a lot. Uh, years ago, I was with, uh, uh, this, this, uh, I was going through this Eastern philosophy kind of trip and, and, and I, I studied with this yogi guy who, uh, who talked about 40 breaths. Yeah. And, a few years back, and, 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 and probably started all the time with training day, I always try to do 40 breaths. Sometimes you see me bending over and, yeah. and, and I just breathe 40 times. And I did it with, try to do it with every picture now. I try to do it before every take. Just take breaths. And Show it just, me how you do it. No, I'm not going to sit here and breathe 40 times. <laughs> it's private. Cool. No, I just did. did, did, did uh, what I just did I, I know, times I 10. I was thinking about you doing it. Maybe it would help me when I do well, this. Well, I try to. Think, just think about the, the air going straight down and low. Basically what it does is it just... Calms you down. Yeah, cools you It cools you right it, down. And, and it gives you the... Yeah. I mean, sometimes you need to be, you're coming yeah, into a scene with whatever you need, but, but when I need to be relaxed, I like doing that. And it just... Sometimes I can get a little dizzy, a little buzz. You know? I'm like, oh, let's go. All I'm buzzing. <laughs> okay, so let's take the last scene we just saw. You walk, I don't have another scene. You're walking off after the explosion, mm -hmm. and, and there's one shot. There's not edited shot there. Uh -huh. What are you thinking? Anything? I'm thinking... We, we can only get this in one, or we better get this in one. Otherwise, it's a very expensive yeah. shoot. I'm also thinking you can't show any fear. I'm breathing. Mm. Not the 40 breath, but I'm breathing. And I'm also thinking I have no idea how close the heat is to me. <laughs> I'm waiting for something to go by. <laughs> you know, yeah. if anything comes up behind me, I'm taking <laughs> off. Because you, you know, I'm walking away from it. Yeah. And the cameras are like where you are in the distance, in the yeah. long lens, and they're yeah. on me. So I'm having to walk and be relaxed. They, I'm, I'm reading people to see if anybody takes off running, <laughs> either away from me or toward me. They're running away from you. Yeah. You're, in, I'm taking off. you're out of there. <laughs> out of there. <laughs> now, are you protecting this man who you paid twenty-four and a half million dollars to oh, get on this movie? It. Sort of. <laughs> twenty-four and a half million dollars. No. But you know, I just just to, three nine. Twenty-three nine. Yeah. <laughs> But just to come, every morning we'd go on the train, we'd sit and do our homework for the day, I'd say, talking through my storyboards, and we'd smoke a cigar, and I'm sitting with Denzel. Smoke a cigar, have a cup of coffee, just talking to Denzel. And then I go out, I begin my work preparation, and Denzel steps out of the trailer, becomes a character. Mm -hmm. And that's with two movies. So there's this, there's, once that old door opens, and the rest of the day he remains, he's John Creasy.
Even and in the brakes? Even in the brakes. And even with the coat, I remember the first time, the first day, he was sitting with the coat in the car, and then I was going through his line something, she was sitting next to him, and both of them were sitting looking out, prepping the shot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I said to the coat, listen, Denzel, you know, don't take it personally, she just, he just, she just, don't know, I know, I know, I work with Sean. <laughs> Oh, because I'm in Sean, my head. Yeah, yeah. you're in your head. like, I know, I know. Yeah, I she's, with Sean. Don't worry, don't worry, I work with Sean. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, she'll, he'd be sitting in the front and she'd lie in the back reading the comic like this, and he'd be uh -huh. working his character. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm That's working. Great. She's got it already. Yeah, right? no, she's, yeah, yeah, she's got it already. Right. Just an extra <laughs> in the Dakota Fanning movie. This boy, he really looked like you were working hard, but she was brilliant the way she was. Doing. It's acting. It, 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 what, I, what it reminded me of, it's, mm. it is child's play. Mm. It really is child's play. It is imagination and play. Yeah. It is. Good way to spend your life. Great. Not a bad way. Not a bad way. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Tony, good to Thank have you. you. Man on Fire is a movie. I assume it opens this weekend. I'll Friday. read it. 20. It opens on Friday, April 23rd. Uh, Man on Fire. Denzel Washington, Dakota Fanning, uh, Mark Anthony, uh, Robert Chris Robert Walken. Washington. Who am I missing here? Giancarlo Giannini. Giancarlo Giannini. Giancarlo Giannini. Seven Giancarlo Giannini. Rada Mitchell. Rada Mitchell. Yeah. Who else? Um, we, a no, lot of. Oh, we got. Then we got some great. Mexican we got a huge cast, cast here. We got a great Flash cast. the dog. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.